and the selection of RVs is great. So you can see here they have all sorts of different sizes of RVs. And the Type C is typical rental. And up until this trip, I had only done Type C. So this is my first Type A. It's the only RV rental place that I'm aware of, at least in my area, that rents these massive ones with slide outs. So I've got a 32 foot Class A. Once you go slide out, there's no going back. So this is a full wall slide out. And it really is fantastic. And here it is, it's a four. And over here you see the model number 30.4 rental version. Okay, so here's the interior with the lights on. Um, good size couch here. You can fit two adults on each of these cushions. I guess depending on how big they are, but it's very good size. And I can lay down almost flat, not totally flat long ways, and I'm 5'9". Uh, good size booth here. You could get easily two adults on each side. Probably two adults and one child on each side if you had to. Cup holders. Which when you're traveling are very, very good to have. So you're not spilling drinks. Good sized sink. You know, this is a decent sized tub here and a lot of sink space. Um, this moves single um, control for the water. Here's an oven and a stove top. Microwave. Well, this is a pretty compact microwave, but pretty powerful. Worked really well. Um, didn't try the stove, but it's got this protective thing on it that you could actually use to, if you needed more space to cook with. So, very nice burner. And you can see, uh, without the slide out moved out, uh, it's pretty narrow. So this is a single, you know, single file hallway. But when the slide out is out, it's a huge amount of space. So this is a very good size bathroom. Um, I didn't bump my uh, elbows or shoulders on the walls at all. Tons of space in here. Lots of storage. Um, places to hang towels. Here's a couple more here. Turn on the light. A uh, good size shower. Better than most. It's certainly you know, not the same as as your home, but uh, plenty tall too, so I didn't bump my head or bump anything really. Uh, so very nice. And these doors are magnetic, so they never opened on their own while traveling, which is nice. But there is this safety catch here also, but I found that I didn't need to use that. Good size sink, lots of space here. So this is the most spacious bathroom I've ever had in an RV. Uh, storage. Eh. And everything is um, magnetized, so none of these fly open while you're going down the road. Uh, one thing is to use the fan. Uh, I'm 5'9", and I can reach this if I'm on my tippy toes. So if you are shorter than that, you'll want to bring something to stand on. So that's to open and close the flap. The fan does have a button on the side here. Uh, more storage over here. You know, kind of nice little cubbies. So I never had an issue with storage 
in this RV. Of course, there's only two of us. Um, moving on, the refrigerator. Uh, lots of space, good size refrigerator. However, it broke on us twice within a week. And I will get into that. Had to actually find a part at an RV shop and over the phone with the rental uh, technician at the rental place repair the refrigerator <laughs> and then it lasted for I think four days and then on our final day it died again so I'll get into that later but more storage plenty of storage good sized drawers and then a big one down here two more here really big and they do open up just barely with the slide out in um, and over here you've got little drawers on each side or thin I should say but still pretty good space amount of space hanging clothes in there and then up top and this is pretty typical for most RVs, but I'm just showing it. Lots of space up here, too. Here we've got lights by the bed, so you can uh, manage your lighting any way that you want. And under the mattress is just a big plank of wood. <laughs> so it's not like a sleep number mattress or anything like that. It's just a basic mattress and just a big old plank of wood underneath it but that said it was very comfortable I had good night sleeps every night okay so now let's extend it out on the shades all these shades work really well and give you good privacy at night uh, well I guess I'm not sure about that one but all the others you just lift easy to lift and they stay at any height all right so with this RV to do this slide out you need to have the motor running um, so let me do that and another thing I noticed it it has something to do with the 12 volt battery as well so if your 12 volt battery is kind of low the slide out won't work but I found out if you turn on the generator then it will so it's kind of hit or miss but uh, let's slide it out and I'll show you that okay so I've got the engine on and it's a very simple button here slide extend and retract it's that simple so let's do it I've got the engine on Pushing the extend button. And, uh, notice quite a bit, big difference in the amount of space in here. So it basically goes from a single file corridor to you know, several people can just be in here doing what they need to do. Alright, so that's done. Okay, so now you can see, I mean there's tons of space. Multiple people can just be walking and cooking and going to the bathroom with the door open. I mean you can't even walk past with the door open. The refrigerator door and the bathroom door. They do touch but you know it's workable. And then there's this partition here. Just kind of awkward to use. You like push this part down and then pull this part out. I guess it's easier with two hands. And then you can totally block off the bedroom if you wanted to do that. Uh, I 
this. So that's something I've never seen before. All the other RVs I've had usually just has a curtain. But you can see here now there's tons of space to walk on this side of the bed. And just lots of space everywhere. So very nice. So this apparently folds down and becomes one of the beds. I never tried it, but looking at the mechanism, it's pretty clear. This table folds down and then these cushions are just strapped on vel Velcro and they would be put on top, you know, this one and this one on top and this makes a bed. And uh, I believe this also, uh, yeah, you just pull up and it, it's kind of like a jackknife bed. You just pull up and it flattens out, becomes another bed. So officially this RV <coughs> holds four adults and two children. And let me demo this bed up here. So um, to operate this. I don't think you have to have the engine on, but you do have to put in a key. Let's do this. So you can see, you know, this is a Class A motorhome and there's tons of space up here, so there's no ducking to get into the driver's seat. You know, it's very, very roomy. But at night, if you needed an extra bed, you put this key in. Turn it to on, and then lower. There it goes. And that's it, and then you attach the ladder here, and you can climb up in there. Now it says it's a 250 pound maximum, uh, it says for one person, but I guess if you've got little kids you could probably get away with two little kids up there. So as far as the control panel here goes, it's very basic RV stuff. So you're not getting any of the really fancy stuff that this RV probably usually comes with. You're getting like the basic rental version. This is to turn the water pump on and off. Uh, up is on and down is off. For some reason it just says water pump. <laughs> uh, here is the water heater and it does say on and off so that helps. Um, this is the generator, start and stop. I found I had to hold the start button for quite a few seconds um, but it did come on every time. Here's your level indicators, gas, battery, uh, fresh, black and gray waters. And that is the extent of the instrument panel. <laughs> uh, one thing about this RV is, you know, that instrument panel there is kind of hard to get to. Like, you're straddling the edges of this uh, staircase to get to it. That was an interesting selection to put this, uh, put this where it is. Usually it's somewhere in the middle, but for whatever reason, they chose to do it this way. Uh, down here, this is the main power. You can turn it off when you are uh, getting gas. Um, main light switch. And right here is the heater and air conditioner for the coach. So this is not for the front driver's section, but for when you're camped, uh, you've got the diff uh, it's very basic different modes like heat, cool, or fan, and then you temperature up and down. <laughs> so this is one of those things. As a rental, they just keep it as basic as possible. When you buy a motorhome, you get all sorts of additional controls. But this suited us just fine. The heater cranked and kept us warm, and it was. You know, 40, 45 degrees out, so did a good job. Okay, and here's the 
captain's chair. Pretty much no frills. Uh, let me turn it on. Uh, it is pretty nice that you've got like the digital display. It tells you how many miles to empty, which is great. In addition to the uh, the typical gauges up there. And uh, you've got full cruise control. Very nice. It's not adaptive cruise, but you know, if you're doing a long haul, you know, cruise control is just great. I used it quite a bit. Here you've got the haul button on the end, and that's for mountainous, or if you're actually hauling something, but like it'll give you the engine braking when you're going down, it'll give you a little bit more torque when you're going up. So I use that quite a bit, you know, going through the mountains of uh, Oregon and California, like, uh, you know, especially going down the hills, you're going to blow out your brakes if you're not using this button. And it's just a simple button. It's really great. And in here we've got the backup camera. And um, now if you click on this home button, you get all the different options. I chose to use the backup camera at all times. Uh, hooking up the Bluetooth uh, was no problem. I did have an issue, oh, and the equalizer was nice to have. I did have an issue with the Android Auto. Uh, I hooked it up. There's a USB connection here somewhere. I've forgotten. I think it's down here. But I hooked it up, and on my phone it says you can't use it while driving. Uh, put the car in park and turn on the brake and I did all those things and it still didn't work so I don't know if that's my phone or what the deal was but turned out I wanted to have the backup camera on at all times anyway and I used my co-pilot there for directions so that's it pretty basic like uh, air conditioning heating unit so, yeah. You know, no frills controls here, which is kind of good on a rental, you know, I, I had this thing for a week. Some people probably only have it for a weekend, you know, you don't want to spend too much time learning how things work. Um, some other stuff here, never did use this, uh, mirror, heater, uh, you can adjust the mirrors. One thing is, there are no power windows. Every window in this thing is just a slider, so it slides in and out. Uh, same with the other side, no power windows at all. One thing, this is a Class A RV, so there's no doors either. There's this on, only the one door here to get in and out. No driver's side door, no passenger's door. Uh, USB charging here, which is nice. A place for your phone, cup holder. Three cup holders down here, which are very hard to reach when you're driving. Uh, I think this is another thing because this RV was a rental, like here, typically you can put a table, like there's a post for a table. So you'd have more stuff or more place to put things. But with this rental, it, it, yeah, it did not give me that table. Uh, another cool thing I can show. This like, comes out you can if you're working on a laptop or reading a map or something oh and there are map lights up here on each side there's this light so it's I mean it's a great all things considered this RV was awesome couple of issues biggest one being the refrigerator um, but all things said it was great Um, one thing though, when you are, when your slide out is in, there's really no room to get over here. So, that's one issue with this RV. You know, when I slide it out, you'll see there's tons of space. But when it's in, if you need to keep it in for whatever reason, uh, getting over here is kind of, you're going to have to do some climbing. The other issue we found is that this 
uh, electrical outlet which is great on this one side you've got the uh, cigarette lighter type regular uh, plugs and then um, HDMI for input to the TV and then USB for charging so all of that is awesome however it's only on that side of the bed on this side there's absolutely nothing <laughs> and I looked everywhere I looked down below I tried to look even to see if maybe this TV like swiveled out if there was a plug behind it uh, nothing so um, I ended up getting a, an extension cable plugging it in over here running it through the back of the mattress which is easy enough you know just it just pulls out uh, USB charging here which is nice a place for your phone which is nice but because it's so close to the window I found the Sun would come in and bake my phone uh, so maybe not the best place for that one noticeable issue with this is the clock up here like I can read it now oh and it goes away if you touch it this is a touch screen but a lot of times this would be the horizon and it's white and the horizon is like a white or a bright blue or something and I couldn't read the damn time <laughs> so little details you know they they need to work out on this thing but you know, generally I liked it the refrigerator uh, lots of space, good size refrigerator. However, and the way I know the refrigerator is not working is there's no light here. Typically, you have a light above where it says auto. On and off switch does nothing. This switch does nothing. Check the fuses. There is no problem with the fuse. It turned out to be that one. Uh, apparently is a diode in the back and it's a known issue with this refrigerator okay and out here so for a frame of reference here's the RV and it turns out this pin is the back of the refrigerator so you open it with or without tools like that. And this pin just comes off. Comes down and then completely off. And so what it ended up being is this little red wire. It's connected back there. You know, I, fortunately I did bring a screwdriver and I got rid of this plate here so I could work on it. But uh, it just it had to remove this screw and then make another connection here. So one, this side was just a plug, so that was easy enough. But this side is just a loose wire connecting, um, using a screw to connect the wires together. <laughs> so if you didn't have a screwdriver, you could not have done this repair. Fortunately, at the last minute, I did bring a screwdriver. Uh, and was able to make this repair with the help of the uh, RV rental technician on the phone with me. I don't know why there's a rubber band there. <laughs> but yeah, so I've never repaired an RV refrigerator, but now I have. So we had two of them go bad on us in a week. So hopefully they fix that at some point. This is the outside light, which is very nice. It kind of a blue, um, you know, non. It's like a glowing blue, so it won't bother your neighbors at the campsite, which is great. This is the step. So you'll notice when you open the door, you've got a step that automatically comes out. But if you push this. To the down it won't automatically retract it'll just stay out uh, so it's you know if you're going in and out a lot closing the door a lot uh, it can get annoying to have that thing going in and out a lot so you can just leave it in that position if you want to and then here is a step light 
which you can't really see, but it helps you get out uh, in the dark. And another nice thing is this has a pretty good awning, and you control that here. So, and again, with this, we don't need the engine on. In fact, it won't work at all if the engine is on. <laughs> Found that out the hard way. Thought it was broken, but it turned out I had my engine on and it didn't like that. Really, really big awning. I mean, it takes up, covers a lot of ground. And it is adjustable, although I didn't try. You can adjust the pitch. So there's the awning. One nice thing about this door is it doesn't just fly open, it's got uh, some hydraulics, so it will only open up to 90 degrees. All the other RVs I've had, the door will just totally fling open and smack against the wall. That's kind of a nice touch. Here is storage. I guess I'll open it up. Pretty good size storage. And there's a light on the side and that just works whether the engine is on or not so it's kind of good you can see what's in here uh, it looks like a little um, drain so if you get it wet or ice or whatever in there right here some mechanical stuff uh, as a renter typically you don't deal with much mechanical stuff but there it is looks like a couple of batteries that's good to know two 12 volt batteries so yeah that will power like the awning and even the slide out so that's good to know that that's there um, never did use this but some external electrical outlets now I read on the Thor website and this is a similar storage space. On the Thor website, like if you buy these, this specific motorhome, it like comes with more outdoor entertainment stuff like a TV. Since this is a rental, there's no such frills, just basic storage. But, you know, it's handy. Not sure what this is, but again, oh, yeah, this is blocked off LP gas connection for um, outdoor grilling. Somebody decided to come down my street and make a lot of noise. Fresh tank. Uh, I've forgotten what's here, some more internals and leveler. I guess a little bit of storage down there. Something else that's blocked off because this is a rental. It's normally that would be available to you, whatever it was there. Yeah, so they make, they assume that you're renting these things, you don't, you're not a pro and so the more stuff they offer, the more things you can possibly break. <laughs> I think that's what it is. So here's the ladder for the interior bunk bed. And you can see the hooks on the end that uh, hook onto it. So that's how you get to that, that bunk above the uh, driver's seat. Here, they were nice enough to uh, include a, an outdoor table, folding table. And here is a good spot for a cooler, fits perfectly in there, which we did use because the refrigerator died. <laughs> uh, and again, some lights, so it's good to have lights in these spots. But we have tons of storage here. Going around the back, there's a ladder to get up, which I did actually use once, just to get uh, pictures of scenery. gas tank. Uh, this uses Octane 89, which is like not the cheap stuff, not the expensive stuff, but the middle grade stuff. So 
your gas expense will be a little bit higher than a normal RV. 30 amp hookup, uh, cable TV. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, oh and here's your city water. A million people out here. And here's an outdoor shower hookup. It's kind of nice. Never did use it. Uh, actually, I did use it to clean the hose. Uh, and works works just fine. So here's one of the big drawbacks to this RV. You've got your drain here. The, this is the lever for the black tank, and there's the gray tank. <coughs> But the spout is like in the, it's in the worst possible spot. So getting in here to twist on and off the hose uh, is awkward. And actually kind of took me some time. This is like the worst possible place because you've got this uh, pillar right in the middle of the way. It's just don't know what they were thinking. Okay, and another problem we had was the slide out at Tillamook Ice Creamery wouldn't slide back in. <laughs> Just died. But I turned on the generator and that fixed that problem. And then the awning wouldn't come in. And we found out that was because the engine was on. <laughs> so we had to turn the engine off and then it came in fine. So here we are driving, and I gotta say, driving this RV was just a pleasure. Uh, it's a Ford V10, at least that's what I read. Check. Um, tons of power, never had an issue. Uh, steering radius was really nice. Uh, didn't have any problems getting, you know, maneuvering in and out of things. Now obviously it is an RV, so you have to, you, know, you can't go down narrow roads and park anywhere. You, know, you do have some constraints. But that said, for an RV, the maneuverability was really great. One thing that's fun about the uh, Class A, uh, collected a lot of bugs. <laughs> Check out all the bugs, I love it. My favorite thing. <laughs> One week's worth of bucks in the springtime too, like in the summer, I can't even imagine. So that was fun, watching the bugs splatter. The cool thing, you know, about it being a rental is I don't have to clean that. And here I go around the corner. This, this big steering wheel is just so awesome. Feels like you're driving a truck. Another thing that was really fun about driving this, uh, yeah, you're up really high. This is a 13 foot clearance on this thing. And when we were driving down on uh, the interstate, we were at eye level with all the big rigs. So we were, and sometimes even above them. <laughs> I remember one time uh, there was a like a milk tanker truck and I was actually looking down on the top of the tank. <laughs> I'd never done before, but we were always at eye level with the, the big 18-wheel big rigs. And, you know, I'd just pass them, I'd look over and say hey, and it was cool. I felt like I was part of the, you know, the club, the big rig club. And uh, I enjoyed that. One thing you do have to look out for are the trees. Um, you know, 13 foot clearance. Sometimes ugh, low hanging trees and you want to smack. And uh, that did happen once on uh, one of the smaller roads we took. And it wasn't a tiny road by any stretch of the imagination, but it was relatively a uh, less traveled road. And I didn't even see it. But I heard it. I heard this massive, just bam. I was like, what the heck was that? I still don't know for sure, but um, when we got 
to where we were going. I climbed up the, the back ladder and looked on the roof and there was a branch there. <laughs> and it just smacked against something and I didn't see any damage. Uh, so at least there's that, but I guess the moral of the story is watch out for low hanging branches. And going through roundabouts is always fun. I'm pretty good at it to the point where I can even do it one-handed like I'm going to do right here. Of course, I'm just taking it right, so it's relatively easy. You do have to make sure your butt end isn't smacking up against any uh, signs. Here in California, we have signs for everything, so there's signs everywhere. you got to make sure you're not going to smack those with the rear of the RV, or either side, obviously. But stuff that you don't really think about much when you're driving a car, you know, when you're driving a 32-foot RV that sticks out quite a bit in the back, you do have to think about that. But that's part of the fun. So here I'm going down a hill. I'm going to turn it on to the press the TDW haul button. And you can see on the dash that little trailer light shows up. Great trip, loved it. 